There is an unsolved problem of mathematics from 1967 that is made up of a whole bunch of smaller problems. And these prove to be the best way to engage students in subtraction. In this video, we're going to learn how to solve one of these problems. We're going to see some children solving them, and we're going to learn how to make them ourselves. Those two boys were working on this problem. How do you solve it? You start by placing the odd consecutive integers starting with 1 on these blue circles. Then you ask yourself what is the difference between those connected circles. So 5 and 1 are connected here so we have to put 5 minus 1 on the red line. So we're going to do that. 9 minus 1 those are connected, so we're going to put 8 on that line. At the bottom we have 13 and 11 connected, so we have to put 13 minus 11, that's 2, on that line. See how it works. So we have to do that for all of the lines, and we win whenever all of those are different. So you see we've won here. Uh oh we haven't, because there's a problem. We have these twos. We have two twos. So that's not acceptable. All those red numbers that we had have to be different in order for us to beat this dragonfly. How to solve the problem? Well, not easy to see, but uh, one way to do it is to swap those two, and then we have 11 minus 1, that's 10. And we have 13 minus 7, that's 6. And now all of the numbers there are unique. We have beaten the dragonfly. The first problem that I give to students is not as hard as the dragonfly. This is a really hard problem. Instead I would give something with less blue circles. So maybe this wasp or this butterfly. But my favorite one is probably this starfish. And it's my favorite because if you put the number 1 or the number 11 in the center then you solve it guaranteed. Now let's see it done incorrectly. Now let's eavesdrop on some students working on a problem that's a little bit tougher. A big motivator for some students in solving these problems is the joy of getting a new animal and a new puzzle to solve. And I love playing with this, so I might ask, do you want a really vicious animal? And then I give them a bunny rabbit or a dimetrodon. I think using beautiful images is very important. There's a lot of students that are uh, very much empowered whenever they see and are playing with beauty. Here's a photograph of a hermit crab by Vanessa Pike Russell. It's a work of art by itself. Here we have seven blue circles. This is a tough problem for grade threes. You do not want to go far beyond seven blue circles whenever you're constructing a problem. And there is room for you to construct problems, especially whenever you give the students uh, the openness to design their own monsters or their own sharks. So you get them to draw their images, but you retain control over how many blue circles they get. That way you maintain control of how hard a problem the you're giving to the students. So here we have six blue circles in this shark, and that 
that's a moderately tough problem. Uh, seven would be very tough, and eight, I think, you, you might not ever go to eight. Okay, let's look at some of the rules that you need for drawing your red lines. So you've got your blue circles. What Are these sufficient red lines? No, everything has to be connected. So yes, this is a possible problem that you could give to your grade three students. Is this one acceptable? No, it's not, because there is a loop, and you can have no loops in your uh, designs. Is this acceptable? No, because it's not connected. The top isn't connected to the bottom. Let's connect them. Is this acceptable? Yes, everything's connected and there's no loops. So this is another problem that you could give to your grade 3 students. Again, we use consecutive odd integers starting with 1. Who do we have to thank for such a beautiful bunch of problems? Georg Ringel was one of the mathematicians involved. Not only was he a mathematician, but he was also a great butterfly collector. And whenever he retired from the University of California, Santa Cruz, he donated 5,000 specimens to the university. The name for this unsolved problem in mathematics circles is the graceful tree conjecture. And basically it is no matter how many blue circles your insectoid or animal is made up of, is it always possible to find a solution? Despite it being unsolved, this problem deserves to be in every grade 3 classroom learning subtraction.